Hello everybody, welcome back to the Nocturnal Gaming Network, my name is Zira, and today we are once again playing Space Flight Simulator. And today's goal, we are going to kick it up a little bit. We're going to send a satellite to space. Now, we're going to send a communications satellite specifically, right? And we're going to send it into a real low circular orbit around the planet. So let's get right into it. We're going to go and build a new rocket. And uh, when when designing, you know, a rocket or whatnot, I always like to start with the payload that we're building here. Um, so we're going to start with the satellite itself. All right. And to make sure that this thing's controllable and that it doesn't get deleted if we ever clear the debris in space, we're going to put a probe core on it and then we're gonna give it a little bit of electricity let's let's use this we're gonna give it an ion engine and that's gonna serve dual purpose here it's going to be um, for decoration and it's actually gonna be to allow this thing to have some control so we're gonna put the ion engine right here we are going to put a um, docking port there. We're going to pretend that's the communications dish. We're going to put a little parachute on it. Now this parachute's not going to actually be anything for function. It's literally going to be there for decoration. Uh, and then we're going to put a couple of these RCS thrusters on it because these are great for controlling um, yourself in space. Boom, put some solar panels to make it authentic. How about, how about we put another one right up here? There we go. Um, I think that's that's gonna be it. That's and this is our um <laughs> this is our communication satellite. So now we need a vehicle to send it into space, and uh we're going to want to put another control pod on that. That way we can deorbit the vehicle after we go through and um, actually, you know, launch the satellite here. So we're going to go back to basic and we're going to put a connect, not a connector, a separator. Let's put it like right here. Now, what this is doing is it's actually tying the uh, the satellite into the rocket that we're using to launch it. Now we're going to go to aerodynamic and we're going to put a fairing on this. And what the fairing does is it's going to protect the rocket from, you know, any heating that would occur during launch. Um, and, you know, make sure that the payload actually survives into space. And there's no, there's no atmosphere heating or anything. So this is, I suppose if we want to be really technical, like unnecessary, where did my, I look away for a second and my probe core is gone. There we go. Did I hide it behind that? No, I don't know where the probe core went. It disappeared on me. I'll see it when I watch the video back later. All right. Uh, anyway, so there's no atmospheric heating or whatnot. So we don't technically need the, um, fairing, but you know, I want this to actually be a fairly realistic type, like, playthrough here. I don't want to be, you know, just sort of making these weird things and whatnot. I want to actually, like, try to make it make sense the way I'm making it. So, here's our rocket. Here's the rocket we're going to use. And, basically, we've got our two boosters on the side. That's our going to be our first stage. It's going to get us all the way out into space. And then we're going to use the second stage to orbit ourselves, to actually make orbit and then adjust our orbital trajectory. And then after that, we'll let go of the satellite, we'll deorbit the second stage, and then we will correct our uh, orbital trajectory if we need to. So let's go. We're on the launch pad. We're going to click on both of the engines to start them up. There we go. Make sure they're started. I'm actually going to go to, oh, how about 100% thrust here and launch. There we go. 
we're going to do the same thing we normally go uh, go to 2,000 meters off the terrain and then after that we can start to rotate ourselves to file, uh, follow a better trajectory. There we go, about 45 degrees, so something like that. And then we're going to go to our map view. And the map view is, like I've said, the easiest way to do all this orbital stuff. Uh, we're going we're gonna to go just... Oh, let's go just a little bit more. Let's go to like 31 kilometers there. Yeah, that's that's perfect right there. So now we can turn. And what we're going to do is we're going to want to burn prograde at 100%, like as soon as we get out of the atmosphere here. And I'm going to point myself basically 100% parallel, uh, not parallel, perpendicular to the planet here. And that's going to start leveling out our trajectory, and we should be able to, you know, expand our trajectory before we actually reach our apoapsis. So there we are, we're out of the atmosphere. See how our apoapsis is moving away from us? That's good. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go here, pop off those, get rid of our fairing and then start boosting. Now we need to turn slightly radial out here because if we don't, see how we've passed our apoapsis, uh, we're gonna begin to lose altitude and we don't wanna do that. So we'll burn radial out, that will get our apoapsis to catch up with us. And then after it passes us, we can start adjusting back radial in until we're you know, almost even with the apoapsis. See how it's about stable right there? There we go. So right about there, you know, just keep keep turning back and forth ever so slightly uh, radial so you can keep the apoapsis directly ahead of you. And it's probably easier if I just, you know, follow my spaceship here, my rocket. And we're getting pretty close to um, to circularizing around the planet, which is good because we're almost out of fuel. There we go. So right about here when the apoapsis is heading away, even though we are, you know, burning at pure retrograde, that's like where we want to be. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to slow ourselves down and we're going to turn a little bit, but we're, we're waiting for our periapsis to be exactly 30 kilometers. And we might have to slow ourselves down like all the way to like 1% here to make it work. Uh, let's actually do this in two burns. We're going to speed up and get to our apoapsis to save a little bit here do it a little more efficiently. All right, so we're basically at apoapsis. That's probably close enough to finish the burn. We'll just go to like 0.6 to like 2, something like that. All right, 29 kilometers, 29.9, 30 kilometers. All right, we are at perfectly 30 kilometers, and then we're at 32 over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to accelerate time around the planet. We're going to get ourselves to just before our periapsis, so like right about here, point retrograde, and then we'll burn again and we'll speed ourselves up ever so slightly here until we start going down. There we go. We want to keep checking in on our periapsis from time to time to make sure that we're not actually uh, lowering our periapsis by burning radial in either direction. I think technically to lower it right now we'd be burning radial in, uh, but we also don't want to raise it either because I want a nice perfect 30 kilometer orbit. And we're going to do this one more time because we are right at right at an apoapsis of 30.1. Boom, see how it spun around there just like that and it's kinda 
it's kind of like jiggling if you look at it. See how, see how it's like bouncing up and down? That means we are literally 100% at a perfect, um, <laughs> you know, orbit here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to point ourselves prograde right here. Oop, a little bit too far on the rotation. That's what I get for holding the button down. And then we're going to separate. Now, separating is probably going to give us a little bit of extra speed on the satellite. Mm, I can't tell. I don't think it did. So we'll point ourselves retrograde now. And what we're going to do is we're going to deorbit the rocket. Now, if you forgot to turn... If you forgot to turn yourself so that the rocket is behind the satellite, so forgot to turn yourself prograde, what you can do is you can burn either radial out or radial in. And you burn at a low speed, like 10%, something like that. And that'll slowly move you vertically towards the planet or away from the planet around the satellite. And then you can slowly turn yourself retrograde. Once you're at retrograde, just kick your speed up all the way, kick your throttle up all the way, and see how we have now lowered our trajectory. We don't care about this rocket, so we are just going to let it crash. Hopefully it'll crash into an ocean or something and not, you know, cause problems or hurt anybody, but we're going to say it does. Let's, let's see where we are here. Uh, ooh, that doesn't look promising. It looks like we are right over what is that that's gonna be well hold on hold on which one are we with we're, we're the wrong one with this one all right so we're right there so we are probably right over like france or something like that right over we're right over europe anyway uh western europe and yeah that's basically it with this oh we do have one more thing here we want to take and turn our satellite facing towards the planet. Now, there's nothing to make the satellite automatically rotate around, but that would be cool if we could like keep it continuously pointing at the planet. Um, but there it is. Our solar panels are extended. We're in a low, stable orbit around Earth, and we're done. So thank you all so much for watching. My name's Zira, and this is the Nocturnal Gaming Network, bringing you Spaceflight Simulator. And the next time we return, we will do some sort of other orbit, probably a really high orbit this time. So, yeah, thank you all so much for watching, and have a wonderful night.